What's up YouTube? This is Wendell aka BitNative with another video from Work From Home Tech. Right now the prices are inflated. It's hard to get good hardware in order to set up a small business or work from home or find something affordable now. But I'm definitely keeping my eye out on real good hardware that may be used, but you can still obtain this hardware in really good condition. So I have this HP Elite Desk that I bought used and it was $138 with keyboard, mouse, windows. It had a SATA drive inside 240 gig. It also had a one terabyte 3.5 mechanical drive. Uh, it has expansion ports. It's got 16 gigs of RAM and it's got a four core i5 four series processor installed. Now the memory is 1600 uh, DDR3, uh, but this is a Hewlett Packard box that is built for the desktop in the enterprise or in a Soho small home office. In addition to that, if you remember the metal as a service video, we still have the Lenovo boxes. These are also on sale. This particular HP desk, uh, Elite desk I bought, it was $138, but if you look on eBay, you can get it for under $100. And that's gonna be a lot better bargain than a Raspberry Pi, which doesn't have the expandability. Because I'm gonna show you here that this box is going to become a small mini server once I put in a dual ethernet card and I put in an actual NVMe drive on a PCIe Express card. So stay tuned in this video as we get into more bargain prices on hardware to help you work from home. Starting off this video with the unboxing, the shipment arrived actually a couple of days early and we began the unboxing starting off with the keyboard. I liked how the foam was fitted. Um, everything was packed nice. Here we have uh, the advertisement. This is not a paid advertisement, but uh, I wanted to go ahead and show this to give credit. The power cable was a brand new power cable. Um, nothing reused there. I definitely enjoyed that feature, having something new um, with no <laughs> with no burn-in smell. Uh, like I said, nice form-fitted foam. Uh, the box did have uh, one scuff on the front, but nothing major, as you can see. And over on the side, they had a little label and contact. And here in the back, we have the two display ports. Uh, then we also have the PCIe slots. There's four of them uh, for expansion. And this is a, a nice setup, nice half height case uh, where you can use the short extended uh, expansion port cards in the back. Uh, they attach the actual Wi-Fi adapter to the PC and it's a USB. I'm not even sure the brand, but this is the Wi-Fi adapter that came with it. That was actually a nice touch. Uh, the the Wi-Fi is not built in, so it gave me Wi-Fi plus the onboard Ethernet for connectivity, uh, as you can see there. I can reuse that on another system, which is what I'll actually do since I'll be installing additional network. Uh, the case, nice, quick, open case. Uh, I took a look inside, and I was actually impressed by how clean this box was. Uh, very clean inside. If you take a look at the actual... Um, heat dissipators, uh, there was no dust, the fans looked in a real good shape. Here you can see those PCI Express and you can also see there's two spare RAM uh, slots that I may be getting RAM. There's the SSD hard drive, the Kingfast there and there's also a one terabyte uh, mechanical drive. I gave it a quick shake here just to make sure there's no loose screws or debris floating around in there. Um, and then I go, I went ahead and I replaced the lid to this box and that was pretty much it for the unboxing.
So taking a look at the actual HP Elite Desk 800G1 SFF. Uh, this is a desktop computer, like I said, for installing in an office. It's a quad core i5, four series at 3.7 gigahertz. Uh, this thing was pretty snappy. It's got 16 gigs with two open slots to put 16 more in there. So I know it can support 32 gigs of RAM if you want to put it in there. It came with the 250 or the two, I think it was actually a 240 uh, gig solid state drive, a two and a half inch. Um, and it included a one terabyte mechanical drive, which I actually took out. It was a little too noisy. Uh, that drive, it kind of drove me nuts. Uh, so I had to get it out of there. Um, the Windows Professional was installed on the solid state drive. Um, it started up. I think these these the vendor here uh, is a certified Windows reseller. So they were able to put Windows on there. And the initial install started up. So I shut it down, took the drive out, and I swapped it out with what I'm going to show you here in a second. So moving to the next expansion option, uh, this is the Ethernet card here. I got a dual Ethernet card uh, so that I could bond the Ethernet ports together if I wanted or if I wanted to run separate networks. Um, you add this to the onboard network card. That gives me three Ethernet ports to use for things like OpenStack or Kubernetes where you have one network for storage, one network for the internal provisioning, and one network for an actual interface or a use, you know, UI. Uh, that makes it easy when you have separate interfaces to utilize VLANs uh, as needed. Uh, this is an Intel chipset. So this was recognized pretty much by everything you can see here. Compatibility list includes Windows, Windows Server, Linux, FreeBSD, and even DOS. Uh, make sure if you're gonna get a network card, that's a add-on network card, make sure it's compatible and preferably an Intel chipset. chipset. Uh, so your driver issues are kind of resolved out of the box. Uh, this was an easy no-brainer install. The next card, this is the NVMe card that I, I elected to buy. Um, this was a, just a $15 card, uh, nice and cheap. And I put a one terabyte Samsung uh, SSD in here, which actually it's a uh, Samsung one terabyte NVMe drive in here. Um, but this card actually supports the NVMe, the M2 SSD, and it also has a port, comes with the cable as well, uh, for a two and a half inch SSD. Uh, this was a nice card. Unfortunately, I, I went cheap on this, so it doesn't boot to this card. So the, this card doesn't support a BIOS boot, but the network card that we just looked at, it does support Pixie boot. So that was nice to be able to have that Pixie boot. Like I said, for bare metal as a service, if you saw that video I did, uh, being able to do it with that card in the uh, expansion slot. This is the drive that I put in. Um, if you take a look at this, it's a Kingston drive. Kingston's, it's a well-known common brand. Uh, nothing special about that. It's SATA 3 drive. Um, the one I got was the 240 and you can get these things for 19 bucks. Um, I think I bought like four of them at the time for the Lenovo machines that I did, and it's 80 bucks for four drives, and if you have a drive in there and it goes bad, if you're doing something like Kubernetes where you can just use that bare metal as a service after you slap the new drive in to provision it and then push out whatever containers or um, VMs that you're using. Uh, so I just have those and it's hard to beat that price. Uh, there's uh, a lot of value there for 20 bucks. Moving forward, we'll take a look at the comparisons of the Raspberry Pi that I was looking at and some of the other single board computers are just too expensive now. They're hard to get a hold of and they're just too expensive and you have nowhere near the expansion capabilities at all. 
Uh, so reasonably priced Raspberry Pis made sense, but the price that you see now, it just doesn't make sense. You can go back and get some of this older hardware that runs a lot faster and can you can get with a warranty and you can still get parts for them. Um, it, it's not very difficult to get those parts for Hewlett Packard or a Dell machine. Here's a B-Link computer, which is a Ryzen 7 um, processor. This, this is a nice, fast machine, but as you can see, it's $400. Um, and if you take a look at as far as expansion, there's no expansion on this. It is what it is, and you're stuck with whatever it has. You're stuck with that 16 gig. Uh, yes, it's DDR4. You can pretty much maybe go inside and expand the actual NVMe drive, but you're stuck with those two USB and that one type C on the back there. The last one I want to take a look at is something a little more comparable. Now we get over here to something that's 450, which is actually a Ryzen 3 with four gigs of RAM. Um, it, heaven forbid running Windows on this thing. That thing is going to uh, crawl. They've got it with Windows 11, but I, I just don't see spending 450 on this when I can get that other HP box and uh, I can get things done with it. Now, if I'm just going to do this for setting up my own personal desktop, then I'll probably just build out a full rig and get a full rig and purchase a motherboard, CPU, and RAM um, and get a full tower if I'm going to do that. If I'm going to spend 500 bucks, that's what I would do, but that's just me. And it's up to you, but I think right now, given the prices, it's going to be more economical to go ahead and get something like this and continue to learn, educate yourself, practice, um, expand and grow as you generate more revenue. It may, may make more sense to move out to the cloud or expand your own cloud with something like OpenStack or create additional clusters. Uh, one of the things I've been working on is I've been expanding out between multiple sites, which has taken up a lot of time and held up some of the videos, but we're going to get back into that a little bit more now that we've got additional resources. So stay tuned for that. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Uh, the next video I have will be the project I have with the four Lenovo boxes. It's going to be the cluster in a box. So stay tuned for that and have a nice day and get some work done.